Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. Now this is the two hour chart of gold provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. Just wanted to point out a few things here. You can see this tremendous volume spike that we have. Doesn't quite correspond with a bottom. It actually corresponds with a higher low. But now the volume is dropping and uh, we're testing the depths that we made all the way back in May there at around 1240. Same thing going on in silver. We actually dip below the 19 price. You can see it doesn't really show up on this chart as much. If we pull out a little bit more, you can see that, that silver is doing some pretty serious volume here. Uh, it's not like if we go out to the daily, it's not like the volume we did with the Boston bombing spike down, but you can see that it's a fairly large increase to steady volume. So what's going on? Well, there are some changes going on in the world and the big trends that we're following recently are going to be the trends going on in the euro. You can see that uh, again, large volume, a stair stepping down effect in the euro. Euro's down in the 128 range. You can see that's a drop from the 137 range just from back in June. Uh, June. So a big devaluation going on in the euro as well as a big devaluation going on in the Japanese yen. You can see that big, big change. Move from around 100 to 106. That's a 6% change, a 6% devaluation in the value of the Japanese yen. And you can see that in the dollar index. I pointed out in the last few updates here, we've moved from 79.8 all the way up almost to 85. So a, a fairly big move going on in the dollar. What does all this mean? Well, I, I'm not sure. I can't tell you for sure what it means, but there's big changes coming really quick. So I wanted to start off with this Zero Hedge article that came out today. And this is gonna be a big, big rabbit trail. So before I investigate the rabbit trail, go down the rabbit hole on this one. Let's look at this article. Obama's former chief economist calls for an end to U.S. dollar reserve status. Really? Seriously? So that's pretty shocking. Now this is actually a quote from an article authored by Jared Bernstein of the New York Times. So let's just skip the zero hedge here and go straight to the New York Times. Now the name of the article is Dethrone King Dollar. Here's the op-ed you can see. It was August 27th in the New York Times. And so we'll read a little bit of this. Washington. There are a few truisms about the world economy, but for decades, one has been the role of the United States dollar as the world's reserve currency. It's a core principle of American economic policy. After all, who wouldn't want their currency to be the one that foreign banks and governments want to hold in reserve? Yes, actually, I, I would ask the same thing. Who wouldn't want that? But new research reveals that what was once a privilege is now a burden. Undermining job growth pumping up budget and trade deficits, and inflating financial bubbles. To get the American economy on track, the government needs to drop its commitment to maintaining the dollar's reserve currency status. Wow, that's a big change. The reasons are best articulated by Kenneth Austin, a Treasury Department economist in the latest issue of the Journal of Post-Keynesian Economics. Uh, are these uh, what's the journal of post Keynesian economics are these people who realize that Keynesianism is a failure or are they a new branch of Keynesianism we'll see that we're not going to find out needless to say it's his opinion not necessarily the departments on the assumption that you so that tells you right there here's a big trial balloon we're going to float 
On the assumption that you don't have the journal on your coffee table, allow me to summarize. It is widely recognized that various countries, including China, Singapore, and South Korea, suppress the value of their currency relative to the dollar to boost their exports to the United States and reduce its exports to them. They buy lots of dollars, which increases the dollar's value relative to their own currencies, thus making their exports to us cheaper and our exports to them more expensive. In 2013, America's trade deficit was about $475 billion. Its deficit with China alone was $318 billion. Though Mr. Austin doesn't say it explicitly, his work shows, keep that in mind, his work, we're going to look at his work here, shows that far from being a victim of managed trade, the United States is a willing participant through its efforts to keep the dollar as the world's most prominent reserve currency. Hmm, the world's most prominent reserve currency? Are they referring to the euro, maybe? When a country wants to boost its exports by making them cheaper using the aforementioned process, its central bank accumulates currency from countries that issue reserves. Well, how does it do that? How does a central bank accumulate currency? It has to export. To support this process, these countries suppress their consumption and boost their national savings. How does a country suppress their consumption? Is this saying that people who have, uh, such as China or Japan traditionally, who have populations who tend to save more, these are bad? They're suppressing their consumption? Remember the recent story, uh, that Americans are bad because they're not spending money. Same theme here. Since global accounts must balance when currency accumulators save more and consume less than they produce, other currency, currency issuers like the United States, must save less and consume more than they produce, i.e. run trade deficits. So I'm going to stop there. That's the biggest fallacious nonsense, garbage comment of this entire article. Nobody must save less. You can save as much as you want. The fact that you don't save just as an individual or a nation is your own choice. That you're a pro profligate spender and that you spend everything you get and you spend more than you get and run an eternal debt, that's your own choice. There's nothing forcing the United States to save less. We just simply do. So that's the article. I'm not going to debunk it anymore. And the reason why I'm not going to debunk it anymore is I'm going to show you right now. So we're never given the title of this article. Uh, this is the New York Times article by Bernstein, but we, we aren't given the original that he's quoting. In fact, we don't even get any direct quotes. So we just have to kind of guess what that is. But we, before we go to that, let's look at the comments here because just the first three comments pretty much sum it up. Pretty ridiculous op-ed. America with its reserve status gets to consume a lot more, a lot of material from Asia and the rest of the world while paying for this surplus consumption with paper that we print and trade surplus countries to get to reinvest the trade surplus dollars in near zero interest rate treasury bonds and effectively invest back into the US. Why give this up to become the next Greece? Most ridiculous piece of op-ed I've ever read from the New York Times. Here's another one. It's USA's economic domination that makes the dollar the global reserve currency. Being a military and political superpower underpins it. The Federal Reserve is probably the most transparent and independent central bank in the world, giving the currency further credibility. I don't agree with that. Most international trade and commodity prices are denominated in dollars. In most economic basket cases, from Argentina to Zimbabwe to Iran to North Korea, the greenback is the de facto currency of the streets and the bazaars. As long as the U.S. is the dominant country in the world with wide open goods and capital markets as well as 
the most inventive, innovative society the world has probably ever seen and the source of a huge amount of its wealth, the dollar will remain the world reserve currency and there is very little policymakers can do about it. Huh? Well, I have to disagree with that. So let's go to the third comment and then we're going to investigate this article. This is Charles in New York. People on the left always assume that you can devalue your currency as a way to bring about prosperity. It has never worked anywhere in the world. It will not work in the U.S. If any reader can come up with a significant counterexample, please do. By the way, Germans run a flat, neither surplus nor deficit with China, the reason being that Germany produces the highest quality goods that the Chinese desire so immensely. If the dollar loses its position as a reserve currency, it will not be long before we will be in the same state as Argentina, a bankrupt country with a high rate of inflation and constant runs on the currency. So I have to say that the commentators, just reading the first of three of these 210 comments, certainly are more knowledgeable about the issues than the author, Jared Bernstein. But let's go ahead and get the article that Jared Bernstein is quoting because what I wanted to do was debunk the arguments in this paper. So we know that this paper was written by this former Treasury official, Kenneth Austin. So let's go grab the paper. Here's the link. I believe this is a link because actually we're not given the title of the paper. We're not given a link to the paper. We're not given a title to the paper and we're not given the paper. So the best thing I can do is try to guess. And this is the name of the paper I believe that is being quoted. This is from the Journal of Post Keynesian Economics, 2014, volume 36. Issue 4, pages 607 through 634. Remember, these are journals. These are scholastic journals. These people are people who pat each other on the back and buy each other's journals. And uh, that's how they keep themselves in business. But here's the title. Systemic Equilibrium in a Bretton Woods II Type International Monetary System. The Special Roles of Reserve Issuers and Reserve Accumulators. So that's pretty much the dead giveaway that this is the article. And so let's go ahead and click on the download link here. And that takes us to ME Sharp. And ME Sharp gives us a link to the PDF and the HTML. And this is Kenneth Austin, US Treasury Department, University of Maryland, University College. This article develops a model based on balance of payments of the new international monetary system. It shows that if some countries engineer current account surpluses by exchange rate manipulation and foreign reserve accumulation, the burden of the corresponding current account deficits falls first on the reserve issuing country. So I think this is the paper. I don't know. But let's click on the PDF. Oh, you need a username and password. So this PDF is not available to the public. Remember, the most transparent administration in history so we have this former White House Treasury official writing a paper that you can't read being quoted by Zero Hedge, who's quoting Jared Bernstein of the New York Times, but there are no quotes of the original article. So something very fishy there not something that I put any trust in. So I'm not going to waste any more time on that. Obviously, these people have no intention of debating the facts. Hopefully, somebody like Peter Schiff will go and pay. I believe the number I saw was a $465 annual fee. And by the way, I also looked at the download statistics. A total of 65 people have actually read that PDF. So whatever you make of that. But let's go to a more important article here. And this is an article from David Stockman. And this is an article that is absolutely shocking. This is one we covered in the blog, and I have beat the drum on these issues for the longest time. 
These government workers are so greedy. They're so insane, especially the teachers and the administrators, that they are literally the parasite that kills the host. There's no question that these parasites are going to kill the host. When you see the numbers in this article, you will be absolutely speechless. Uh, the saying that I've quoted many, many times as I've covered these issues many, many times is that if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. And trust me, these pensions are too good to be true. So let's look at this article. From 2013 to 2014, the number of teachers receiving six-figure pensions in Illinois increased by 24%. Today, 6,000 retired Illinois teachers are collecting at least $100,000 in annual pension money. Yet, as Kid Kelly Riddle reports for the Washington Times, if the Illinois Teachers Retirement Service, TRS, were forced to pay out the pensions it owes today, it would only be able to pay retirees 40 cents for every dollar. Indeed, the state's pension fund is in trouble According to a report from the spending watchdog, Open the Books, over 100,000 Illinois teachers had actually broken even on their pension payments after just 20 months of retirement. Illinois taxpayers can pay up to $2 million per teacher per retirement. The TRS pension fund is underfunded by $54 billion, according to the Illinois Policy Institute. By 2029, the fund could be entirely broke. That is optimistic. Remember the Social Security? That date comes up a lot closer than you think it is. TRS is the largest pension fund in the state, according to Riddell. Illinois legislators have continued to underfund TRS in order to free up funds to spend for spending elsewhere, yet over half of Illinois teachers are retiring before the age of 60, and many teachers are making twice the amount they earned while they were actually employed. For example, Sandra Renner served as superintendent in the Butler School District in Illinois, during her last four years at her job, her salary rose by 31% to $288,000. As a result, her starting pension is $210,000. She will receive pensions higher than her salaries for all but five years of her time in the workforce. Administrator Moshin Dada saw his salary rise from $156,000 to $358,000. Yes, that's right, folks. That's more than the president makes. During his last year in the job, as a result, his pension is $254,000. And I, I'm not going to go into it. The numbers are just staggering. You need to read it for yourself. It is absolutely shocking. These grifters and criminals in the public pension system they are so greedy. They are so voracious. These public unions are so out of control that they're going to completely destroy the entire system. There's no question at this point that the system will be destroyed. So how do these two stories come together? What do they mean? It's very clear that this King Dollar article is a trial balloon by the administration we have a New York Times reporter giving us an article that we can't read from a former Treasury official telling us that we need to let the dollar go. And we can see from these pension numbers that there is no way that these dollar amounts can be paid. The only way these things are going to be paid is if we let the dollar go. So there's no question that this system has to collapse. They know this, they're starting to hint at it, but at the same time, they're trying to take the metals down to as low as they can before they let the thing collapse. Now, this is actually a very interesting declining pennant formation that we have in silver. It is almost a textbook declining pennant and this is something that needs to be watched very closely because 
there may be a washout low to this thing. I've been predicting for a very long time they may actually try to test that $15 price. But my prediction is if we do get a test of this low right here, then you're only going to see that price for a very, very short time. If you're stacking physical silver, you need to react very quickly and make your purchases from companies like Atmex or Gainesville. There may be others I don't know of, such as Provident and JM Bullion and Modern Coin Mart. I don't know. The only two I know for sure who move their prices real time down when the market falls are Atmex and Gainesville Coins. And you have to have a very quick trigger finger if you're going to stack because my guess is if we do get that $15 spike down, which it looks like they're trying to set up now, if we do get that spike down to $15 test, then it probably won't spend very much time there at all and it's going to come right back up. And we'll talk to you next time.